you want to, the only thing you want to do is, is always keep it in past tense because when we bring it to present uh -huh. in a subtle sense we're I mean the miracle sees that it's already happened uh -huh. I put uh -huh. someone there to talk to him even you know I will put kind of has a in a sense a linear kind of a sense mm -hmm. or this or that but, it hasn't already. but you're but you start out on the walk and you think about putting something yeah but literally see then we're getting back <laughs> into to this causation kind of a thing that I can it really seems that way at times where I think I'd like water and then pools show up and water and this and that and that's where a lot of the concepts like in unity about abundance using your mind to attract things to you the script is written I mean really the only thing we have a choice on you know is, is seeing it through the miracle or, or being above the battlefield and seeing that none of those images are true and that's none of it's me that's where the peace comes from as soon as you know, the mind can be used to, you know, it seems as if symbols are being brought forth, like people use their minds to get cars and things and stuff and everything, and then they make an association. Is my mind is powerful and creative, but you see it's linked in with the form. Mm -hmm. Again, we don't have that, that clarity that the Course is bringing, you know, of the levels. They're, the right mind sees it all as false, you know, they're, the right mind is, is is not full of images it's able to it's above the images to, to look on all the images as equally false you know it doesn't attempt to it, it's just really clear that, that it's causation and that all of these are unreal effects you know and also if they're unreal effects then their cause is unreal I mean it the Holy Spirit looks to the cause and knows that the cause of these effects is unreal. He has judged their cause and overlooked that. He does not look to the projections on the screen. He's judged their cause and knows that it's unreal and therefore you know, everything in the wrong mind is, is seen as, as false. So in that sense, you know, you can see where you could, defenselessness then makes perfect sense. There would be, there'd be never a reason to be have any kind of care or worry or concern you know, can you imagine what it means to have no cares no worries no concerns but, be, but to be perfectly peaceful happy content all the time okay. yet that is what time is for to learn just that and nothing more I mean you know it's kind of like that's it that's the lesson mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be striven for either it's just <laughs> yeah that quote that I put up in my bathroom here like just spoke to me where it says you would not react at all to figures in a dream you knew that you were dreaming mm -hmm. it's like how could you react yeah. if you really knew that you were dreaming yeah. what I had a funny dream last night mm -hmm. that, that thing I, I think I read it the first one maybe about the uh, the function of dreaming. Yeah, that one really struck me when I was listening to one of the, the tapes. Uh, awareness of dreaming, of dreaming is the real function of God's teachers. They watch the dream figures come and go, shift and change, suffer and die, yet they are not deceived by what they see. They recognize that to behold a dream figure as sick and separate is no more real than to regard it as healthy and beautiful. Unity alone is not a thing of dreams. And it is this God's teachers acknowledge as behind the dream, beyond all seeming and yet surely theirs. Yeah, I can, I can hold on to that <laughs> kind of a thought. So once again, even though they seem to be sick and dying and everything, it's just seen as, as, in a sense, the mind sees if it's impossible. It's impossible for the body to be sick. It's possible. You can say die, but, but really die, death gets redefined psychologically as whenever you're upset in any way. That's death. I mean, that's a, a more helpful thing because that's tied into, that brings it back into the psychological or the mind realm and gets it away from the physical realm, as if something happens when a body quits breathing. 
transition. Transition to what? I mean, you know, that's a lot of times when they say they've made their transition. Or passed on. Say it's a continuation. Yeah, the mind is. It's not good. Same spirit. It's the same. It continues. Yesterday, when while you all were out doing your errands, right before you came home, I guess she gathered that. Uh, Matthew came in wailing, I mean, not just crying, but I heard him before oh, wailing hand. with his hand. And it was like, it was a great opportunity for me not to get tied into it and sucked up in it. And, and I think it was something. And, um, but what I noticed is I just wanted to be loving. And I didn't, I didn't know how to do that exactly. How to communicate that without getting caught up in it, and I, and I wasn't going to get caught up in it. So I don't know. I mean, I don't. I just held the intention of being loving and not get, getting caught up in it. And how did you feel? Well, I, I felt like it w- that wasn't communicated. But I, I didn't know how to be, how to express loving, being loving or comforting or whatever. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, does it mean, you know, holding him and hugging him and giving like a physical? He came to the door when I came home too, and you know, was like on the verge of tears. I could tell he was like working himself all up again about it, telling me that this had happened and the log had fell on his hand and stuff, and uh, showing it to me. And I just kind of looked at it, and then got caught up in other stuff and he never mentioned it again. I just said, do you want me to look at it? No, no, I just got crying. Then I'm going to go to my room. Go <clears> ahead. <throat> yeah, when he came up, too, it was, it was, I kind of sat down with him and sat down in the bed, and and he wanted to show me and everything. And, um, but I remember just holding my, holding my intention, and I, pretty soon it was just a matter of a few seconds that he quit talking about the hand and started talking about other things. You can tell that the attention was was shifting. When you don't share it. When you don't share it okay. in mind, okay. then the attention has shifted from the hand to just sitting there, there we were on the beds talking in, for about five or ten minutes, just about other things. And, and one of them was that he did it, he said, when will my mom be home? And I said, oh, she's running some errands. And I'm sure that's part of that conditioning, too, of wanting to even look for someone, you know, that's familiar sympathetic. and sympathetic <laughs> or whatever. But that once again, when you came home, that's that intention. But when it's not shared, or like that example, I, I love that you always shared about going to the Christian Science when he had that scab, I guess, from falling down on his face. On his face. Oh yeah. And he had hit the pavement like this on his face, uh, fell off his bike. So his whole face was a scab. And he just had huge. Yeah, like the elephant man, except when going to Christian Science, they they didn't the kids nor the teacher made a big deal. Nobody mentioned it. Mentioned it even. And it was the kind of thing where everywhere we went for at least a week, it healed very quickly. But for about a week, everywhere we went, people just like, oh my gosh, what happened to you? Oh, are you okay? What you know? And they wanted to hear all the, you know. I mean, people really made a big, big thing about it. And so for me, it was the contrast of going there. It was never mentioned, and it was like, oh, what a difference that yeah. makes. Really put into and, practice. And Matthew didn't. I mean, 
from what I observed, he didn't feel the need to go in and say, oh, by the way, this isn't how I usually look. Or, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or you know, he didn't explain it to anybody. There was another woman, Betty, is it Betty Ann down in Cincinnati, who was in Christian Science, and I talked to her, an elderly woman who had all kinds of experiences like, like that in her whole life, and, you know, going to pick up her granddaughter at school, and after her daughter was being sent home by the school nurse, and her daughter just going on and on in a panic about the nurse said this, and it could be this, and it could be that, and just not giving attention, you know to it at all, not lending her mind to share that perception, yeah. and just letting it diffuse automatically. Because the mind is literally calling out, you know, teach me that this isn't so. Well, you <laughs> That's know, what's one, one area that I, it's like I, I feel at a loss for is like when the kids have felt sick and wanted to stay home, and I'm said, you know, okay, so stay home, um, then, you know, the school requires that you write a note and explain why they stayed home. And so I always, am, it's like, I can't write, they were sick. It's like, I think, well, what, what do I say? I needed to stay home today. <laughs> well, what I've done is, yeah. The well, sickness, you know, in the sense of in the mind, you know, the mind calling for help. You know, that's what a sick mind is, is the mind is, is calling for help. But it's like, it's what is my definition of sick? So Mandy had a sick mind calling for help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mandy didn't feel well. Yeah. Yeah. Mandy didn't just feel well. But in your mind, you know it. I mean, you have to, the words can say one thing, but you have to know the meaning. Yeah. It's that, that Jesus was so clever, you know, about saying the, the words, and you can see his meaning from his perspective. Someone could read, read an entirely different meaning into it. So have you thought what I described? Of yeah, I have at times. Like, but not knowing how to communicate You know, better. one day Mandy got up and I went to wake her up in the morning and she said, Oh, I have a stomachache. I don't want to go to school. And, you know, I sometimes it's like a stop and say, okay, you know, what I, what I usually do in that situation is I'll just kind of like say, okay, well, get dressed and we'll see how it goes. Let's just see, see how it goes. Get dressed. It's like I, I give her like one thing to do and then, you know, and don't give it attention. But there are times when I'll think, well, what's the most, if this is a call for love, what's the most loving thing to do? Do I lay down in bed with her and hold her for a while? I mean, is it is it that that she needs or wants? And I try to just let it happen. I try to step back as much as I'm able at the time and just let it happen. And, and sometimes I do feel like they need that, like being embraced and being safe or feeling, you know, that, that does come at times, I think, when in a physical way. It's like the, the behavioral component of the miracle, but we're back to that yes. when we were discussing last night. The, I, the important thing is I have to be in my right mind. Yes. That the behavior will feel automatic to whatever. It will be, hug, will be hugging and holding through me, not by me. You know, a time probably that I felt that more was the other day when Joni walked in and was clearly limping and, you know, it was real clear that something, she wasn't walking like she usually does. And and I just said, hi, Joni, and didn't say anything about it. And then there was this feeling that, you know, I did have noticed thoughts coming in of, oh, I hope Joni doesn't think I don't care about her, or, you know, that she doesn't misinterpret this, that I'm callous or something. But, and and that was something too that I just, it, when I was at Christian Science, I just realized at that point too, it was like to even say to somebody, to acknowledge it in any way, Draw any attention to yeah, to say, oh, even if I don't mention, oh, what's wrong with your foot, but just say, are you okay? Mm -hmm. 
you know, 